The Holy Gospel According to Luke After this the Lord appointed seventy-two others and sent them ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, Go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Indeed, I've given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you today and always from our loving God. Amen. Before I go into my sermon, Kevin preached for me this past Sunday, I wanted to extend a special thanks to him for leading Sunday service. Unfortunately, we've had our first bout with COVID and are thankfully on the mend. I'm looking forward to seeing you all this Sunday, July 10th, as we also gather after service for a picnic at Wells Park. Be sure to read news and notes for more information. In today's reading, Jesus sends 72 people out to heal and tell the good news. The story is important because it gives us insight that it was not only the 12 disciples who were given this charge. 72 men and women are also sent out like lambs to the wolves. Last week, we heard Jesus' almost harsh words on what it meant to follow him. And today we see more direct orders of Lee's being possessions and not talking to anyone on the road. If the house they attempt to enter accepts their greetings of peace, that's where they will stay. And if they do not, they are to leave them in protest. Jesus says that those who reject the 72 rejects not only him, but also the one who sent him. Jesus does not, however, give them instructions on whom they can and cannot talk to. Anyone who opens their house and is willing to receive the peace that only God can provide is fair game. Let me repeat that. Anyone who opens their house and is willing to receive the peace that only God can provide is fair game. Luke's portrayal of Jesus is my favorite. The author of Luke paints Jesus as somewhat of a renegade, a fierce protector of those on the margin with a clear message to us as Christ's followers to do the same. 
We first see this in Luke with Mary's Magnificat, a revolutionary text that states how God will strike down the powerful and lift up the lowly. Luke's gospel continues to outline Jesus' ministry to those on the outskirts of society by giving us 10 chapters filled with parables such as the Good Samaritan, the Prodigal Son, the Lost Coin, the Rich Man, and Lazarus. They take us on meals Jesus shared with those on the margin, the Levi's, Martha and Mary, the Pharisee. On the road to Emmaus, Jesus broke bread with two disciples and their eyes were opened to see him resurrected. Luke's Jesus allows a woman to wash his feet. Luke's Jesus gives sight to a blind man in Jericho before entering Jerusalem where he would be crucified. Luke's Jesus calls us to seek out justice. As liberation theologist Miguel de la Torre wrote, justice begins with the plight of the poor, the oppressed, the marginalized, the outcast, and the disenfranchised. To engage in justice is to do with it and from the perspective of those whom, consider, whom society considers nobodies. Luke's Jesus loved the nobodies. Friends, sometimes even modern day ministry can feel a little like a lamb being sent to the wolves. After the June 24th overruling of Roe versus Wade, my Facebook feed was filled with pain, sorrow, and a fear of what would be next. As I watched colleague after colleague, colleague post messages that supported women's ability to make their own choices as it pertains to their bodies, I also saw people challenge them too. Questions popped up like, how can you be a person of God called to work in the church and still be pro-choice? In her pastoral response to the Supreme Court's ruling, ELCA presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton wrote, I want to acknowledge that this decision affects many people, especially those whose pregnancies unfold in complex situations and the people who love them. Many now find their moral agency restricted because federal law no longer guarantees access to legal and safe abortion. They already face difficult moral questions and the Supreme Court decision only adds to their anguish. As our social statement reminds us, we have both the freedom and the obligation to serve neighbors in complex situations. And as a church, we are called at this moment to recognize and spiritually support people who are struggling with decisions around pregnancy. An article posted on pbs.org from May 20th, 2022 entitled, I Trust in God, Religion, Religious Backers of Abortion Rights Reconciled Their Work with Their Faith. It, they tell the story of Ramona, a nurse in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, who describes herself as a faithful woman of color who has been called by God to serve the women at West Alabama Women's Center. Many of the clients at the center identify as Black and already have children, and more than 75% survive below the poverty line. Every woman at the clinic who receives an abortion sees Ramona. And when asked how she reconciles her values with her work, Ramona says that she believes the Christian way is to love people where they are. And that means walking kindly with them as they make the best decisions for themselves. I wonder who those 72 healed and visited. I wish we knew more of their stories. Were they oppressed in their own way? Did they have decisions they needed to make that were unpopular, but because they accepted the peace of God were able to help the, with that were able to with the help of the 72 Jesus sent out? Did they seek justice in their own right in a way that only following Jesus's teaching to love one another could provide? Did the 72 walk with those who are on the margin? 
Did the 72 engage with people whom others considered nobodies? Our hymn of the day this past Sunday was written by Wayne Walds, Director of Music Ministry at First Lutheran Church in Ellicott City, Maryland. He wrote the hymn specifically for the ELC's annual day of service, which honors the motto of God's work, our hands. For all the work we do, we do as God's hands, just as the 72 did. Jesus told them and us that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Friends, we are called to be today's laborers. I'll try to link a YouTube version of the song for you to listen to. And as you do, I encourage you to really pay attention to the words. May they serve as our prayer today and always to continue to work towards justice and God's peace in all we do. Amen.